Welcome again, Monday morning to Art 116. I'm James Fritz, your genial host. As an icebreaker, we've got about uh, six people in the classroom so far. So as more people arrive, um, I'm gonna take attendance. But first thing right out of the bat, I wanted to do a, a screen share and go just show you a, a good list, a, a usable list of Martin Luther King um, quotes that you might be able to use uh, as part of your thing. So let me just go to screen share and where's my Martin Luther King quotes? Well, it might be here. So um, let's try this. Okay, I gotta move. There's so much stuff to have to move here. Okay, where did I go? 22, okay, here I went. Um, let's see, I am screen sharing. So I went to Google search and I said, um, give me, I'm looking for uh, Mar Martin Luther King quotes. And I hit the search button and I was finding um, websites that had a hundred Martin Luther King quotes or 200 Martin Luther King quotes. And I wanted to even kind of uh, dial it back a little bit. So I said 20 Martin Luther King quotes and did another Google search. And I, it, I found this Oprah magazine, the O magazine, website and she has this one page up here of 22 Martin Luther King quotes which is kind of nice because this is cool I'm going to just um, page through this a little bit this is the first slide so what's really nice about this is you get different pictures that are not super popular of Martin Luther King in his life and it's in the 1950s when he's just a kid in his 20s and also the 1960s when he's in his 30s and so you know, here's a young, young Martin Luther King and his wife, uh, Coretta Scott King. Um, love is the greatest force in the universe. It is the heartbeat of the moral cosmos. He who loves is a participant in the being of God. So one of the problems that you have with Martin Luther King quotes is that they are long and they're really hard to work with as a graphic designer. We like the short pithy ones as a graphic designer, something that is seven words or less because we can really you know, work with that in terms of graphic design. If you've got too much text, um, it tends to get wordy and then the viewer gets kind of bogged down in reading the text and then gets pulled out of the image. So with graphic design, um, sometimes it's really nice to kind of work with um, either edit, and I know it's, it takes a lot to edit a Martin Luther King quote, but um, sometimes you have to edit these things down to just get to the essential words. Um, and so I'm gonna keep on going through. Intelligence plus character, that is the true goal of education. That's an actually really nice quote. It's not super um, well known. It's something that we teachers should probably be using a heck of a lot more of. Uh, I'm just gonna flip through a couple more of these. And uh, let, let's see, no, let no man pull you so low as to hate him. He was really about hate and love, violence and nonviolence. And so he really um, crafted a um, philosophy of nonviolence and applied it to the movement and not just to his teachings in church and everything else. And it's just kind of amazing to think that um, you know, representing people who have been violently uh, attacked and put in their place so long, you know, in the Jim Crow South that um, the nonviolent movement uh, could actually come around. And, you know, there was lots of internal discussion and strife in, inside the movement because, um, you know, people were tired of uh, being treated as second-class citizens, tired of not having their full rights uh, to be able to vote and um, get uh, public accommodations, jobs, um, you know, use a drinking fountain, use, uh, you know, bathrooms, use all of that kind of stuff. Those things were all segregated in the South. And so, um, you know, it, it just is interesting that even through that, all that frustration, the idea of peace um, and, and, and peaceful, uh, nonviolent uh, resistance and protest was a thing uh, that marked Dr. Martin Luther King and the movement. And that's really um, what is to be celebrated here because um, like I said last Friday, you know, I was kind of like, what is the matter with white people? You know, what is it with white people? Um, when I was looking at the protest at the Capitol on Wednesday. And it's just really interesting to contrast that with 
what the um, especially King's part of the civil rights movement was trying to accomplish. So lots of different quotes. And I went through here and I, I copied all of these into a list. So I'm going to put this up as a Word document. I'm going to add it to the, our assignment in coursework. So you have a go-to place for this. But you can also yourself, if you're not familiar with Martin Luther King or his quotes, you can go um, look up Martin Luther King quotes as a search term, and then you will get to a bunch of reading to do. And you can see the kinds of stuff. Here's another famous one. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot, cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And that's really kind of nice. There's two sentences there. They would split out into almost, you know, a meme where you could put one line up on the top of the image and the other me uh, line down in the bottom of the image, sandwiching the image between those two things. Uh, very interesting. Okay, I gotta, I gotta break away from this and come back to you guys. So here I am again. Huh, it's still only six people in the class today. So I'm going to take attendance and see who's all here and then do other things. So Adriel is here. Okay. And Emily is way down here someplace. I remember from before. Emily, 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 Emily. There we go. Okay. All right. And Gabriel is here. Okay, and Jordan is there. How come the same people come to class every time? And Kelsey is here. Why am I surprised? Uh, Riley McCulloch is here. I'm going to start um, calling you guys the A team because I can. I have a really strong correlation that I've noticed between attendance and um, performance, scoring high in the class, getting Bs and As in the class. And so I thank you for uh, coming uh, to class on a regular basis. Uh, it just it shows engagement. It demonstrates that you're interested in the class, even if you don't always get a chance to unmute your mic and chime in whenever you need to. Please feel free once again today to unmute your mic and just uh, chime in with a question. I'm talking kind of loud, so you're going to have to unmute your mic and get close to your mic so that I can hear you, and then I'll shut up and we can, you know, answer your question along the way. But let's get back into this. Um, I had a couple of things I wanted to play with today, so I'm going to do a screen share because that's what I do. And so... Um, I've got this uh, rather long, lengthy um, uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation that I do as a project um, before I really got into these Martin Luther King Day projects. And so I'm just going to use a piece of it today to talk about um, typography, a short history of typography. Where can I put you guys? I'm going to put you guys up here someplace, get you out of the way. So typography the idea of text and type and fonts that we are working with when we have to apply some kind of characteristics to the words that are going to be in our graphic design, this has a history. And this is something that splits out into something you can uh, study all by itself for at least a quarter or a semester is the idea of typography and fonts. Typography is based on handwriting. So before there was publishing, before there was printing presses or computers, there was just the written word. And languages developed over the millennia. And then the written languages emerged with um, more um, complex civilizations. As complex as civilizations developed, they needed ways of keeping records, uh, of doing commerce, of writing histories about events that were happening, wars and that kind of thing, being able to send messages either from the ruler to uh, generals, um, generals to field commanders in the field, all that kind of stuff required written language. And so that's that came about in many different civilizations. By the Middle Ages, um, uh, written language um, was being used by 
um, organizations um, to communicate important stuff. And that included the church in the Middle Ages in, in Europe. Um, uh, there were many monasteries that sprung up uh, with, uh, um, they were communities of religious people that lived together and worked together. And uh, not only did they um, pray in the church every day and that kind of thing, but they also copied manuscripts to make copies of uh, Bibles and other kinds of things to be able to uh, communicate out to the rest of the people, to communicate to the masses, even if the masses were illiterate at this time, um, the idea of manuscripts was really important. And they became illuminated manuscripts that had artwork in them. Manuscripts included such things as these wonderful um, uh, initial uh, letters that would begin a passage where the, the letter was very large and stuck in, up here in the upper left-hand corner where we start reading because we always, when we are reading most um, uh, Western texts, texts, uh, Latin and English kinds of texts, we go from left to right. So we start up here in the upper left-hand corner and we read this way. And so that's where the big, um, you know, capital initial with all of the flourishes and decoration would be. And then we've got the, the uh, text for the, um, uh, for the page. And the text usually was done in a calligraphic style. It wasn't just really bad handwriting. It had to be legible. It had to be something that people could read. There was an art to it and a design to it. And over the years, um, uh, the way that um, the letters were formed um, had a lot of, of style and rules applied to that so that the letters um, had a way of, of being recognized easily and being read legibly fast by lots of different kinds of people. So anyway, before the advent of the printing press, we had handwriting and calligraphy. And doggone it, I didn't put the word calligraphy in here because calligraphy is kind of an important word. It's one, one of the ones that's going to be on your midterm quiz. If you happen to have a notebook that you happen to be putting notes in this morning, you could write calligraphy, C-A-L-L-I-G-A-R-G-R-A-P-H-Y in there. Maybe we're going to see it in one of these slides here. Yeah, here's, here's calligraphic handwriting down here in the text. On this slide, I've got three different examples of fonts because in my infant wisdom, I decided to break this into three different kinds for the fonts that you're gonna uh, uh, encounter when you're dealing with a um, graphic design software, even like uh, Microsoft Word. In the pull-down menu from Microsoft Word for fonts, there are about 150 or 200 different fonts that are available. And I've just classified them into these three different kinds. The serif font, let me pull this down here someplace. The serif font, an example of it is Times New Roman, which is a serif font. And the serifs are all of these cute little um, strokes that begin and end each letter. And you're gonna see that every um, vertical um, uh, stroke of each letter is wide and every horizontal stroke of each letter is narrow. And that follows exactly what it would be like if you were writing with a calligraphic pen, a little uh, straight flat nib of a calligraphic pen, if you were dipping it in ink and writing, you would, you know, if I can get my cursor to do this, you would start here with a little downward stroke, and then you would hold your calligraphic pen and you would make the S curve, and then you would end it with another little cute calligraphic stroke. Those strokes that begin and end each word are the serifs. And serifs make these fonts more legible and easier to read. They become the visual connective tissue that we need to be able to read a big block of text really easily. So most books are published in a serif font because like, hand, like the handwriting that they were based on, this eases eye strain for the viewer and makes uh, large text blocks like a whole page of, of small type um, much easier to read so that your eyes can move really quickly over the letters and kind of uh, it, it really encourages um, ease of reading without having to do a lot of eye strain and that kind of stuff. Okay, this next one, the sans serif font, 
um, is based on uh, the French word sans, which means without. And so basically it's a, with, it's, a, it's a font that has no serifs in it. It's a font that is without serifs. And this, hap, this font here, the name of it is universe without an E on the end, universe font. And this is a modern sans serif font. In the, in the 20th century, um, with um, uh, all of the modernism that was happening uh, around the world um, with uh, in this, the rise of industry and the industrial revolution, with modern inventions and conveniences like uh, uh, communications, um, transportation, all that kind of stuff, um, people were um, divorcing themselves from the past and kind of throwing away some of the old conventions of the past and trying to try on all kinds of new modern ideas and modern uh, things that, that were a kind of a clean break with the past. And in um, uh, typography, a lot of uh, graphic designers, um, typographers, uh, type designers started playing with sans serif fonts. Now these are clean um, and they, they have a kind of a bold, modern, clean look to them. But as we found out when trying to use them a lot in the 1960s and 70s in book publishing, they're not as easy to read when they're a small typeface, when they're a small type size. So they don't really lend themselves um, to uh, uh, less eye strain and ease of reading. And we found that out the hard way. A lot of books that were published in the 1960s and 70s look really weird because they look so hip because they're done in a sans serif font, but they're actually kind of difficult to read. And you can notice the eye strain as you're trying to read them. Nowadays, uh, kind of based on what some newspapers have done, especially um, the Minneapolis Star Tribune in the 1970s. Um, uh, newspapers and other publications are using sans serif fonts mostly for headlines and subheadings and stuff like that. But then they will go back to a, uh, a serif font like Times New Roman for the actual text um, boxes and the, the, um, the columnar text and the, the text that would uh, be the the, the, small, the small print that you'd see on most pages in books and magazines and in newspapers. The third kind of font that I have kind of identified are, are what I called, um, uh, well, I, I call this, I, I wrote serif font here, but I actually call this, um, what do I call it? I gotta scroll down here to see what I call it. Um, novelty. I'm gonna call this a novelty font, like Edwardian script um, is, it has serifs and it's based on handwriting and it's the kind of a font that you would choose if you were going to make wedding invitations. Many, most wedding invitations have this kind of a font applied to a formal wedding invitation that goes out um, to announce your uh, wedding and its date and everything like that. This has a real, um, uh, uh, formality to it and all of that kind of stuff it is very difficult to read. It really slows down the reader to read something like this. This is like reading somebody's letter that they might have sent to their lover if they were far away in the 19th century, like either a soldier who was away at war and exchanging letters with a wife back uh, at home or something like that. Um, you know, this is a, a romantic kind of thing, but there are way other kinds of novelty uh, fonts out there. And so everything that doesn't look like a serif font or a sans serif font, all of the fonts that are based on some kind of handwriting, whether it's chiller font that kind of looks like it was painted with a spray paint can on the side of a building, or all of the other um, you know, very decorative and novelty kinds of fonts. I would just lump into one can category as uh, novelty fonts. Be careful uh, of using a novelty font because it really carries some heavy, heavy um, uh, baggage with it, um, cultural baggage. Every single font has a historical cultural baggage that it carries with it. And we as graphic designers wanna make use of the cultural context and the cultural meaning that is attached to the to a font. 
So if we want to um, make a statement that has you know, a certain amount of gravity to it, we may even want to use a serif font because there's more authority uh, in serif fonts. If we want to make a statement that's a little bit more modern, that's trying to break with um, uh, tradition, if I'm trying to make um, some kind of graphic design for uh, the feminist movement or the LBGT uh, movement or something like that, uh, if I'm trying to make bold modern statements, I want to use a modern font, and so I might use a sans serif font. And then if I'm trying to do something very peculiar, like make a movie poster, uh, a Broadway poster, um, if I'm trying to make wedding invitations, I would use some kind of a novelty font that lended itself to those kinds of cultural messages and had that cultural message embedded into the, the, the history of the font itself. Okay, sorry, look, look at this is a way that I get way too, you know, into this stuff. So let's see, once again, I'm gonna move, move, ah, ah, okay. Gotta move you guys out of the way so I can do this. Um, this um, illustration on the right-hand side is from Albrecht Durer's treatise on measurement um, done in a book in a, um, uh, it was probably actually published uh, with a printing press by 1525. He was a Renaissance uh, designer, graphic designer and artist. And so um, fonts are carefully designed based on the elements of art, uh, elements of design and principles of organization that we have studied in design class last quarter. Some of the design criteria include the proportions of the letter, the proportions that's height, and width and the thickness of the line, but that also talks about the spacing between letters and the density of the letters. The height of the descender and the ascender, and if I can find examples of that, let's see. Oh, okay, let's do that. Right here where we have the words angle of letter, the, the lower loop in the G is a descender because it descends below the baseline of this line of text right here. And the L and the F are ascenders because they ascend above this line of text for all that defines the tops of all of the um, lowercase letters. So that's what a descender and an ascender is, are. They, um, they vary slightly from the, um, the size of the lowercase letters. And so that's just a little thing that you might want to know about. Uh, but those things are different depending on different fonts. <laughs> Not all fonts, you know, have the um, lowercase letters um, just be half the height of uh, the uppercase letters. And in fact, most don't. Most have the lowercase letters are about two thirds the height of the full size letter with the ascenders going up a third higher and the descenders going down about a third lower than the size of the, uh, the lowercase letters that stay within those two um, lines. Oh, let's see, what else did I have to say here? That's about all I had to say. So I wanted to show you here in the illustration that um, Durer, Albrecht Durer, really wants you to see what's going into the proportions of each letter in his design. And so he's looking at different heights versus different widths of each letter and how it fits into that kind of grid system and what angles might be involved and everything else. And so there are mathematical proportions that he is uh, applying to these uh, letters that he's designing for this particular uh, font. Okay, moving on. So when we use fonts in design, each font communicates a style. It communicates something about the, um, uh, the history and um, uh, the culture that it came from. Uh, each font identifies with a certain segment of history or modernity. A font is loaded with cultural meaning. And so we want you as, you know, good, um, um, uh, uh, understanding uh, graphic designers to match the style of the font to the style of the client or the product or the meaning of the thing that you're trying to uh, convey. Okay, and so when we try to do um, uh, different kinds of things like the Southwestern 
Uh, the Southwester was a newspaper that we had on campus until about 20 years ago when it quit. Southwestern Softball, Southwestern Basketball. So with Southwestern Softball, um, I'm using a, um, a handwriting, kind of a, uh, an informal handwriting font for the word softball here. Um, the word Southwestern is, is really problematic for us as uh, graphic designers because it's a really, really, really long word. And if you're not careful about using um, a font that is also really, really wide and bold and has a lot of space in between letters, if you're trying to design a jersey for the softball team, you might wind up wrapping their whole word Southwestern underneath both armpits because this gets to be such a long damn word where this font is a lot more compact and tight. So we might wanna use this font for both Southwestern and softball so that it fits and it's, and it's correct. Going over here to basketball. Um, the font up above, again, another novelty font. This time it's called Stencil. And this comes right out of the Second World War. This has a military masculine uh, kind of, um, cultural context to it because it's a, it was uh, based on and derived from marking tanks and uh, personnel carriers and other kinds of stuff in World War II uh, with paint. And so when I use it in, in, in context of the basketball team, the men's basketball team, it's to, it kind of makes it more macho. It makes it more masculine. It's that kind of stuff. So, you know, when you're looking for fonts, fonts have meaning and you want to really try to, um, Use the meaning that's embedded in the font to help sell the thing that you are trying to say. And so the Southwester here is another one. Um, um, we're using a Times New Roman uh, font here because it was a newspaper and Times the New York Times is a newspaper. And so, you know, we want something that works together. Um, when I, I play with this kind of stuff, you can kind of see that if I'm using a, this is an, a set, an 18th century font here. This is the kind of font in the, for the Southwestern student newspaper. This one um, is the kind of font that the Declaration of Independence was printed in, in you know, 1776, uh, that kind of thing. This is kind of a handmade, uh, font, but that's one that's also really based on handwriting. Southwester is pretty much a 19th, 20th century um, uh, newspaper font, but then student newspaper down here, again, is another font that is more about handwriting, and so it's an informal font. It's another one of those um, novelty fonts, and you have to be really careful about trying to mix and match fonts, because when you mix and match, and if you're not super careful about it, you can muddy up the um, uh, the kind of message that you're trying to communicate to the reader, to the viewer. So watch the choices of fonts, but also mixing and matching different kinds of fonts together. You really have to kind of be careful about that. I think that's all I'm going to do here. So I'm going to, um, where am I going to go here? I got to move you guys. I got to stop the share so I can come back here. Okay. Um, you guys, do you guys have any questions or does anybody, has anybody started the project where you might have brought together onto a piece of um, Word, a Microsoft Word document, an image and maybe some text boxes and you're starting to arrange them into a composition. And at this point, you're having trouble. You're in the weeds. Um, you need help. Because if you have that document open on your desktop, I can enable the, the screen share thing and then we can uh, share screen and we can play with that concept. Um, so let me know, uh, is there anybody who actually played with this a little bit over the weekend and has started the project? Um, it, there's no shame in not having done it. it. It won't bother me. I just need to know if anybody would like today to um, play a little bit with that project. And while you guys are thinking about it, the next thing I'm going to suggest is that I open a Word document uh, on screen share and that I will build a graphic design based on what you guys want me to build it on. So if you guys can come up with um, 
you know, what you're interested in doing in terms of a graphic design that deals with some aspect of civil rights or social justice, I will build one right here in the next 10 minutes for us. Um, I don't see anybody unmuting their mic to share their project. And, you know, it's okay if you needed to leave the chat uh, to open up your document and then rejoin the chat, you can do that. Um, rejoin the Zoom meeting and we can do that. But otherwise, what I'm going to go do is um, I'm going to uh, do a screen share where I'm going to go out and do a Google search. And I'm going to ask you guys for a search term. What would you be interested in me looking up? And then I'll go look up something and we'll try it that way. So screen share, um, Google search, Google search. What's a search thing that I was seeing? Here's something. Okay. Um, so I wonder if this is going to let me do this. If I back out of this, okay. So I'm going to back out of this. No, it's not really going to let me do this. Okay, is it going to let me do? Is it going to let me add another one? Um, Geo Google. Okay, I'm just going to see Google search. Okay. So anybody would like to um, give me a uh, Google search uh, term that you would be interested in me looking for um, in terms of an idea, it can be Martin Luther King, it can be, I can say social justice and just look up social justice imagery. Most of that has happened in the last five years and it's been mostly about um, young black males um, dying at the hands of police or other um, white uh, law enforcement or white authority figures. Um, but I want, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's, um, it's request Monday and I will build a, a graphic design based on what you are interested in. So somebody um, unmute your mic and tell me uh, Martin Luther King or social justice or civil rights. You guys, the first person to unmute their mic and shout something out, I will respond to. Anybody there? Social justice. Oh, you're beautiful. Okay, social justice. Ha please, has anybody done this? Has anybody actually looked up something? Um, I'm gonna do, I mean, I'm gonna click on images here so I get all images. And so, oh, I got all kinds of graphic design stuff already. Um, and so I'm gonna just kind of click down on all of this graphic design stuff. Cause here's a lot of people doing a lot of artwork for their graphic design stuff. And um, so that's really cool. And you can just do that. I'm gonna back out of this cause I need something more. I need social justice um, photos maybe photos. Um, okay, more of that stuff. I got to go back out again. Um, uh, social justice um, issues. Help me, help me now. Okay, it's not helping. Photography. I'm going to click on photography. There we go. Okay, so social justice issues. I'm in image search, but then I had to click on photography so I could see what was going on here. I see a lot of people at protests um, and demonstrations and stuff like that. So we've got all kinds of stuff. Poverty kills. This is really interesting. Um, social justice. We've got two um, young kids uh, raising their fists. That could be really interesting and effective. Um, we've got um, migrant farm workers um, here, and we've got historic photos as well. We've got photos from the 1960s, 1930s, um, as well as contemporary stuff. Here's an actual social justice thing right here that is a graphic design thing, um, and I was going to try to find it. It looked like it must be a book cover or something, and it's not helping me out here. So I'm going to I'm going to back back out of this again. Expanding the circle, um, the endangered photographer. This looks like it was a a photo a photographic book cover, photography of social justice, which is really kind of interesting. There's a powerful photograph right there. Amazing, powerful photograph. We've got the uh, the the title in all caps in a sans serif font, something that's a modern font that uh, 
has uh, been slightly um, changed. I think we've got two text boxes here. There's a text box just for expanding, and then there's a separate text back box for the circle. And these two are slightly different font sizes. The expanding is a, a couple of point sizes smaller than the circle so that they could be as close to the same length as possible so that when shoved up really close together, and you can only do that with two separate text boxes. You can you can it, you can get them much much closer than the, the the normal line spacing that it happens in only a when all your text is in a single text box, which I will show you guys. I will show you guys that. Um, so let's see what else is here. Is there anything? These are all protests, 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 protests. Um, Here's uh, Lady Liberty. Liberty is blind, um, and she, you know, carries the um, the scales of justice in one hand, and that could be something that could be used for a social justice uh, message. You could take any Martin Luther King text, any Donald Trump text, any text from a rapper that you want to, and put it together with this statue of um, justice. Uh, the personification of justice and play with that as an idea or an issue. Um, I hope you guys have a piece of paper nearby that you're actually writing down some notes of certain ideas because I'm giving you lots and lots of really cool ideas. I'm going to go to um, George Floyd, J-E-O-R, G -E Floyd, George Floyd, F-L-O-I-D, okay. George Floyd. So this is George Floyd being arrested. Um, and this is one of the pictures right here. And let's see. So this unfortunately has a text box in front of it. I'm going to write, I'm going to click on it and see if I can copy the image. Stop that. I'm going to right click and copy the image. And then I'm going to go into a Word document. You know what? I might have to back out of this. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna come back to you guys. Uh, I'm gonna come back to you guys. Stop screen share. So, were you guys able to see what I was doing so far? Can somebody unmute your mic and tell me whether you could see everything I was doing? Because I was jumping around. Mm -hmm. I right, could. You saw it all. Okay. So now I'm gonna go to a new screen share and I'm gonna open up a Word document. Um, so screen share and a Word document. Which one is one of these? It's a Word document. Here's a Word document. Okay. And I'm going to, I got to move you guys out of the way. I got to open up a new one. So new blank document. Okay. So here's my new blank document. And so I'm going to try to paste in the image that is on my clipboard right now. So control V is paste. And there it is. Okay. We've got We've got something to work with here. Um, I'm going to put you guys over on the side so I can deal with this. Okay, so this is the text box right here. Okay, so this is what started off the whole thing. Um, the police officer was kneeling on his neck, and what kills me is that these guys knew each other. They had uh, met each other before in some other context. So um, this officer, I don't know what his deal was but he decided that there was gonna be this submission hold and this control and choke hold thing for nine minutes, eight minutes and 47 seconds until um, he stopped uh, struggling, uh, but then he also stopped breathing and then he subsequently died. So this is the George Floyd thing that started all of this stuff. And I'm trying to figure out, okay, um, text box. I'm gonna come up here to insert and then I'm going to go over here to text box way over on the right hand side of the insert tools kit and click on text box. I'm going to come all the way down here to draw a text box so that I can draw a text box. So what kind of text should we probably use here? I'm going to use a Martin Luther King quote that I've got in my brain just because I don't have time to go look for one. Um, Injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere i don't even know if that's the right quote but i'm going to play with it for a while so here's what i want you guys to do i want you to highlight the quote once you have it typed into the text box 
I want you to come up here to the home button and click on the home button again, because that will show us our um, fonts. We're going to look for a size of a font that's going to work with the size of this stuff. So it has to be at least as big as the Minneapolis police uh, logo on the back of the squad car. So I'm going to uh, scroll down here to see what 24 point type looks like, 36 point type, something like this might be fine. Okay, I'm going to do this kind of thing to my text box. Okay, and then... Um, this should probably be a modern kind of a thing unless you really want to have um, the weight of history and Western civilization, then it could be a, a, a serif font. So let's, um, let's highlight these guys again and come over here to the fonts and see exactly what kind of fonts we have to work with. Here's a big fat one that has a lot of impact. Um, but it, it kind of takes over. It's kind of out of proportion with the image. If I take the image and I slide it over here, can I slide this? Oh, I can't because I haven't, I haven't formatted this yet. So I'm going to right click on this, come down to wrap text, go over here to tight. I'm going to double check it. I'm going to, again, right click on it, go down to wrap text, go over to tight and do tight and then hopefully I can push this one around. Then this one is behind. I don't see a picture, Pardon by the me? way. I don't see a picture you if you see... have one on there. I do okay. not, I, I still see all the quotes. Okay, all right, let me, okay. That's good to know, I needed to know that. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, bring the front, okay. All right, let's see, I'm screen sharing. I want to, um, I'm going to stop share. I'm going to come back to you guys. I'm going to try to screen share again. So I have, I have a Google. I have a Word document. Okay, I got this Word document. So I've got two Word documents. And how do I get rid of this one? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to turn this one off. Uh, Okay, I'm not going to do that. Cancel. Okay, I'm going to minimize this one. Can you see this Word document? This was right behind the other one. My screen sharing is paused. Stop share. Oh. I'm coming back. Yeah, to I, was, I was about to say it was stuck on the other one still. All right, I'm going to come back to this one again. I'm going to do this one and, and share this one. Now, how about this one? Can you there see? There it is. Okay, so... This, this first thing is the photograph of the Minneapolis police officer with his knee on George Floyd's neck. And so I've started a text box. Now the, the photograph is in front of the text box. So I have highlighted the photograph. I'm right clicking on the photograph and I want to send it to the back. Now that makes my text box come to the front because these things can, you know, stand in front of each other or they can be underneath of each other and if they're you know underneath each other they can um, hide each other or something so now I've got this text box that I put the the quote in that I was playing with injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere that's not quite right um, uh, I have to this is going to have to do for now, but anyway, so we'll play with this. So I'm trying to make this as big as this so that it has the same amount of um, size and visual weight so that, so that there's some kind of equivalency between the, the image and the text. And so that's what I'm kind of playing with right now. Um, okay, so, um, so text box. So I'm going to click on the text box and it's highlighted. I'm going to go up here to the drawing tools because the, he the text box is highlighted. So the drawing tools are here. And so when I click on drawing tools, then I get all of these tools that I can play with the um, text box with. And so with shape fill, I can apply any kind of uh, gray or color or strength of color to the fill of the text box. And 
for now, I don't know what to do. Uh, maybe let's see. His shirt is blue. I might I might pick up on the light blue of the police officer's shirt and do that. So that now I've got blue in the photograph and I've got blue over here. And there's a little blue on the license plate too. So I've got a little bit of continuity of color happening here. So that's a thing. Um, when I'm... Uh, Okay, so I was still formatting the text box itself. Um, there's also the shape outline. And so with the shape outline, you can change the weight of the outline of the text box and make it thicker, thicker, and thicker. Or you can click on shape outline and say no outline at all. And so sometimes it kind of depends on whether we put an outline around the, um, the photograph or the text. And you know what? Actually, I'm going to play with this photograph a little bit. I'm going to bring it back to the front. I'm going to click on it and bring it to the front. And I noticed that um, with my insert and my picture tools, that way over here on the right-hand side of the picture tools, I even have a cropping tool. So I can use my cropping tool to actually get rid of all of this excess stuff in the image. And I can come in even closer if I want to. So I can crop out all of the extraneous stuff. And I'm going to crop this in as close as I want to. So that's the crop. And then I come back up here and I hit the word crop with my left click. Yeah, left click on crop. And it comes down to crop. And I hit that. And then that has simply cropped the photograph. So now I've resized my photograph in Microsoft Word so that now it's a smaller photograph. And I've, I've applied. I've right clicked on the photograph and gone down here to wrap text and then go to this pop out thing and go to tight and make sure that I'm clicked on tight. And that allows me to move this anywhere in the composition and let go of it and it won't snap back to its original position. I can resize the photograph like this by pulling on one handlebar and it won't snap back to its original size. So this gives me all kinds of options for sizing and placing the photograph within my compositional space, which is the eight and a half by 11 page that I'm playing with here. Um, so anyway, th this is my text box. If you guys by next time can find a photograph and import it into Microsoft Word, and then find a, a quote and put it into a, a text box, and text boxes are found by going up here to the insert tab, so you got you to turn on the insert tab and then you got to go way over here to text box and then you got to click and click and draw yourself a text box. I'm going to text box and I'm actually going to draw a text box so that I can click, whoops, come here you, click and, oh, I made one up here just on account of because. Can I now grab that text box and pull it down here? Okay, so you can then type your um, quote or you can click and copy the quote um, off of a website and you can paste it into a text box here and then we can start to play with sizing it, finding the appropriate font for it, applying the appropriate font and then seeing how it fits into the context of this uh, image because ultimately we're going to try to put image and text together. Um, so um, I'm going to play, I've got one more minute, I'm going to, I'm going to change my quote here completely. Um, the arc, the arc of justice. No, the arc of history is long, but it bends towards justice. The arc of history is long. I'm a bad typist. I'm sorry. But feel toward justice. So another Martin Luther King quote, by the way, um, it's so amazing that you can take just about any MLK quote, especially the shorter ones, the pithier ones, the ones that get right to the point, and you can put it together with an image and it makes a really powerful or profound statement. And then all we have to do as graphic designers is play with the size and the spacing and the fonts and everything else. But we can, it's, it's not hard to make really powerful graphic design when you've got good material to work with, like um, good quotes from Martin Luther King 
or maybe even some rappers, you know, fight the power, you know, whatever, you know, rap music um, quotes that you can um, juxtapose with other imagery um, uh, that's, that deals with violence or injustice or inhumanity or stuff like that, okay? And so let's do that. Let's make that a little um, uh, small uh, assignment for next time. If you guys can go out and find an image that you want to work with, uh, please import it, copy it, and import it into a um, Microsoft Word document and dump it in there and save it. And then you've got to find yourself some kind of words, some kind of anything from a two-word phrase up to a Martin Luther King quote, and bring that in as a text box. And then if you will have that open as a document on your desktop next time, I would be happy to help coach you uh, to move that into something that works better as a um, as a uh, graphic design. And if you feel real confident about building graphic designs, then please go ahead and do uh, start organizing your piece as a graphic design and share it with us next time. Have it open on your desktop so that you can use share screen to share it with us. And then we can give you a little bit of feedback or we can ooh and ah and say how wonderful your design is. Okay. I'm going to stop the screen share for now. I'm coming back to you guys. It's been 50 minutes of you guys listening to me talk, and I'm really sorry about that. I hope that I recorded this so that everybody else can be able to see this. Um, this was a lot to get. It's always drinking from the fire hose when you listen to me talk. But we had a short history of calligraphy and um, typography today. We had a little primer on building our own um, uh, graphic design from scratch, from going out and finding an image with a Google image search, and then going out and finding a quote um, with uh, Google search, um, specifying the kinds of quotes we're interested in, and then pulling those two things together into a Microsoft Word document and starting to play with it as, um, as a graphic design. That's what we're doing this week. And by the end of the week, hopefully you will be putting the finishing touches on your own unique um, graphic design that deals with some aspect of civil rights or social justice. Any questions from you guys before I call it a day? Because I'm going to um, otherwise say goodbye for, oh, Gabriel, what's up? Um, so I, been seeing in the last couple of classes that you take the image and then you put the quote right next to the picture yeah is it okay if we break the quote up on for both sides and have the image in the middle oh yes very much and in fact we can slice and dice the quote into all individual words and then we can even push the individual individual words together much closer my problem with all of the fonts is that their line spacing makes them way too far apart for uh, making really effective um, graphic design. So yes, the answer, short answer to your question is yes, you can break up quotes. And I'm gonna okay. break up my quote into individual words so I can shove them together even closer and make them into like almost a word cloud. But the word cloud will still be in the, in the order so that it reads like a text box. But I want my stuff to really be tight and dense so that it's okay. a, a strong um, message. Um, any anything else from you, Gabriel? Was that good, Gabriel? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Anybody else have a question or comment before we wrap it up? That was an excellent question. That was awesome. Okay. I'm going to say goodbye for now, and I'm going to see you guys again on Wednesday. Try to have an image and a, uh, a quote that we can start playing with in Microsoft Word. So goodbye for now. I'll see you guys again on Wednesday morning.